Instead of going straight across, he crosses at an angle, stepping on the rails. His footing is insecure, and he could easily slip and fall. Turn an ankle, or get a foot caught in a switch. Moisture or grease on the rails increases the hazard of slipping. Many persons have lost their life because they failed to look for moving trains. The careful man looks in both directions, then with equal care steps over the rails. He goes straight across and is out of the danger zone of approaching trains in short order. Crossing tracks can be dangerous if done carelessly. Therefore, we should acquire the habit of crossing safely. Never walk close to the end of cars, trains, or engines. They could move at any time. Walking close to the end is dangerous, for a movement would knock one down and cause injury or death. This man does the job safely. He goes quite a distance from the end of the car and then crosses. Being mindful that in any railroad yard, one must always be on the alert. Sometimes it's necessary to go through a train or a cut of cars. An unsafe way is to place in balanced position and could strain back, arm, or shoulder muscles. Again, sudden movement of the cars could produce death or serious injury. If you must go across as a part of your job, go up on the ladder end of the car, then cross over to the opposite ladder, making certain to maintain a firm hold at all times. It is wise, however, to avoid going through a train of cars unless absolutely necessary. Keep a safe distance from moving trains. This man seems unmindful of his danger. If something projected from a car or some object, such as coal, should fall, it would cause instant death. Besides, one could stumble and fall under the train. A man 25 or 30 feet from the track is not only safe, but is also in a better position to have those displayed. He can more readily spot hot boxes or other rarities. As the caboose rolls past, he can observe the markers and can signal the rear end that all is well. Or he observes something wrong, could signal prescribed warning. Climbing a side ladder with feet at right angles, with the steps, throws weight on the toes. Thus one could slip and fall or strain arm and shoulder. Ladders should be climbed with feet at a slight angle. The ball of the foot supporting the weight with greater traction surface. Never come down from the top of a car facing out. This man is doing the job safely having a firm hold on ladder run, placing the feet properly as he alights. And note, he placed his foot firmly on the ground before releasing hold on ladder. In getting off moving cars, observe ground conditions and pick a good place to light. The safer way is to cross the legs in this manner to avoid stumbling. If speed is too great, don't get off, but slow cars down to a safe speed. Never face outward in getting down to the brake step or handling brakes, as this man is doing, because by facing out rather than facing in, he has little means of protecting himself against a fall. It is just as easy to do it the safe way Face the equipment, placing the ball of the foot firmly on the brake step. To set brake always, take a position in which stress is applied toward the car. This eliminates the hazard of falling outward from the car onto the track. In releasing brakes of this type, apply stress toward the car with sufficient force to release the ball. Release brake a few notches at a time. If this cannot be done, secure help.
This kind of brake is equipped with a release lever. In releasing it, keep all parts of the body free of revolving parts of the brake. Maintain a firm grip on handhold. To set this type of brake, use one hand to exert an upward thrust on the wheel and hold on securely with the other hand. No chance to fall. Cut air into car and have air brake applied should you find a hand brake that has been set while air brake was applied. Then the hand brake can be released again, taking proper and safe position, releasing one notch at a time. Standing near the end or on the roof of a moving car is dangerous one can readily see that a sudden stop or jerk of this car would throw this man off balance and he'd go off the car onto the track. If necessary to ride on top, get in the center of the car on the running board as this man is doing, keeping himself well braced against a sudden move or jerk. Should he lose his balance, he'd have a better chance of remaining on top of the car and would not go over the end on the track. Cars loaded with pipe or other shipments that may shift can be dangerous. Do not get inside and take the chance of being crushed. Don't stand on end sill with an arm dangling inside the car, as this man is doing. Get on the outside in a safe place. Getting on cars or cabooses is not dangerous if one learns to use good judgment and not take chances by trying to get on while moving too fast. Have clear space ahead, then get the rear end of the caboose. Slow motion of a man getting on the front of a caboose shows how his body swings in and strikes against the end of the caboose. A good opportunity to get an injured shoulder or cracked rib and the chance of getting under had he missed his step or lost hold. Again in slow motion, this man gets on the rear, taking firm hold of the grab irons, bringing his foot up and gets on safely. Had he missed his step, he would not have been run over. Engineers should pull by slowly to permit safe boarding of cabooses. Riding the leading footboard of an engine while coupling engine to cars is unsafe. There is a danger of couplers passing or that a jolt will knock one off. As cars are shoved, this man continues to ride between engine and cars. This should never be done except when necessary to cut off cars. Now let's see how to do the same thing safely. The man on the leading footboard signals to stop the engine. Gets off to the outside, then, facing the engine, makes the coupling. Occupancy of same side of the leading footboard by two men is dangerous because the man on the inside is in no position to get off should it become necessary. Riding on drawbars or end sails is not safe. There's too much danger of becoming unbalanced and being unable to get off quickly in the event of an emergency. If two men must ride the leading footboard, one should occupy the board on the right and the other occupy the board on the left with both keeping a firm hold at all times. Stepping upon leading footboard from between the rails is very dangerous. One little slip would cause one to be run over. There is no good reason why one should not comply with the rules and board the engine safely. 
get on from the side at slow speed, as this man does. Stepping off between the rails is likewise unsafe. Even at slow speed, an ankle could turn and a foot could be crushed beneath the footboard. There is no way like the safe way. Get up on the outside as this man does, making certain the way is clear and the footing good. Use of the feet in changing the alignment of the drawbars is unsafe, as one may readily see by watching this performance in slow motion. Note this man's awkward position and figure out for yourself his danger of becoming overbalanced or falling. If he should attempt this with moving cars, he would be in still more hazardous a position. Never adjust couplers while cars are moving. Do it the safe way, bringing the engine or cars to a complete stop. Get an acknowledgement of your stop sign or have a proper understanding and wait until slack is adjusted. Then adjust the coupler as this man is doing. To couple air, give the stop sign and get an acknowledgement or have other clear understanding. Wait for slack to be adjusted. Look in both directions before going between cars. Couple the air hose, then opal angle cocks properly as outlined in air brake instructions. If necessary to reduce brake pipe pressure with angle cock, hold the end of the hose firmly to prevent it flying around when the angle cock is opened. Here in slow motion, we see incorrect operation of a switch. Note the position of this man's leg and knee as the latch is released. As he moves the lever over, his foot is in line with the ball of the lever in a place where it could be smashed. Here the feet are safely placed while the lever is moved. The lock is tested to make certain it has not failed and the point examined to see that it fits properly. Now let's consider still another unsafe practice and failure to comply with rules. This train is going to head into a siding. A man goes ahead and operates the switch, but does not examine the point. Seeing the switch turn, the engineer proceeds into the siding, while the man attending the switch remains at the switch. He is in a position to throw the switch under the train. The correct way to do this is only the safe way. First, one should operate the switch, then cross over and examine the point to see that it fits. Finally, the signal to proceed is given. Easy to do and safe, because the switch cannot be operated from this position on the opposite side. Watch the next picture closely. This careless individual gets off the front end of the caboose on the side next to the operating stand. As soon as the caboose passes over the switch, he lines it back, fails to test lock or examine points. He could have thrown the switch under the caboose. There is only one way to perform this job correctly, the safe way. This man gets off the rear platform on the side opposite the operating stand. He waits until the train is in the clear, then crosses over. The conductor is in position to give any necessary signals. He lines the switch, tests the lock, examines the point, then goes for his caboose. The man attending the switch had no reason to give hand signals, his action having told all that was necessary. This train is in the siding awaiting another train. The brakeman, contrary to the rules, goes up to the switch and remains there while the opposing train passes over the switch. A 
hazard is created simply because he's in a position to throw the switch under or in the face of the opposing train. Now for the right way. This brakeman does not go beyond the ahead end of the train for the purpose of operating the switch until after it is cleared by the opposing train. In this case, there is a crossing. He takes a position on the opposite side, far enough back to permit him to identify and inspect the opposing train. He flags the crossing, stopping vehicular traffic. It would be physically impossible for him to operate the switch ahead of or under the opposing train safe all the way. Here, cars are being shoved toward a crossing where there is no prote protection. The man riding the side continues to give signals. He takes the chance of striking a vehicle or a person on the crossing or even being struck himself. Far better to do it this way, the safe way and according to the rules. Stop. Go ahead and flag the crossing. When traffic is stopped, move cars onto the crossing. Enginemen should stop and not accept signals except when man is on the ground at the crossing. Protecting crossings is good, safe business at any time. Suppose, for illustration, your train is in the siding and has to cut a crossing. In that event, let a member of the crew flag the crossing while the other train passes. This is highly important in light of the fact that your own train may be shielding the passing train from a motorist. Do this for the safety of our trains and the vehicular traffic. Your failure could cause you to have regrets for a lifetime because of failure to exercise a little care and thoughtfulness on crossing protection. Taking water is dangerous when not done properly. When engine tanks are not kept clean and orderly, a definite hazard is present. This man is in a dangerous position as he walks about the tank. He could easily turn an ankle, slip or fall on the coal, grease or hook. He opens the manhole cover before pulling spout around. Note position of his feet with reference to open manhole. One slip and in he would go suffering a severe injury. As he puts the spout in the hole and turns on the water, he is not well braced to withstand it, and he stands between the spout and the engine. Now he swings the spout back before closing the manhole. A safe man has a clean, orderly tender. He hooks the spout carefully braces himself properly and pulls the spout around over manhole. Then he lifts the lid, braces himself before opening the valve and stands on the side away from the engine. With a tank full, the spout is lifted, the cover closed and then the spout is shoved back to proper position. In taking coal, the careless individual stands between the cab and apron and consequently is exposed to the possibility of being crushed should the engine move. His footing is insecure and he could easily slip and fall. Overloading the tank not only wastes fuel but also creates a hazard. For a piece of coal may fall and hit an operator or some other individual. To take coal the safe way, do as this man does. Note how he places himself on a safe position, on the pile, and not between the engine cab and apron. He's in a position to round up the load properly, so as to eliminate hazards and save fuel. Should he spill some coal over on the tank, the proper thing to do is to throw it back on the pile. Using the emergency cab foot rail to get out on the running board of the engine or go to the head end 
is a dangerous operation. Footing is insecure and only an extreme emergency should this be done even with the engine standing still. Play safe at all times. Follow the example of this man. Go to the head end of the engine and ascend where there are steps and handholds. Never face out and leaving the cab as it's extremely dangerous. The chances of slipping are great. There is no opportunity to maintain a firm handhold or to guard against falls or strains. Serious spine injuries can result from striking the base of the spine on the steps. The safe way is also the easy way. Turn around when coming down and face the engine and have the hands free of tools or other objects. Place the feet firmly on the ground before releasing hold on grab irons. Look to make certain no person is in the zone of danger before opening blow-off cock, cylinder cocks, or operating injector. Serious burns have resulted from failure to do this. Be sure that the bell is rung to give proper warning before reversing valve motion or moving an engine, except in continuous switching movement. Passenger flagman before blowing out steam should always look ahead on the right side to make sure it's safe before opening the steam valve. Torpedoes are dangerous and should be properly respected. Don't throw them around in cabooses or place them in seat boxes. Keep them in the container provided for their use. Check your flagging equipment and be sure you have the tools to do the job. Check cases to see that spikes on fuses are up so that the spikes will not be driven into torpedo compartments and explode the torpedoes should the case be dropped or strike something. In lighting fusees, hold them away from the face and body. Hold the cap and strike with the fusee in this manner. Place yourself in position where signals can be plainly seen and then give signals in manner that they can be plainly understood. Remember always that disappearance from view of employee or light by which signals are given must be considered as a stop signal. Don't give a signal, then go between cars or ahead of moving cars or engines. When pulling pins from the ground, watch the footing. Use one hand and don't get between cars. Be sure there's a clear space ahead. When push down cut lever, ride the car on which the lever is located. Use one foot only and maintain a firm grip. Cutting from the ground with one or both hands is dangerous. With lift type lever, you can ride the car on which lever is located. Maintain a firm hold and pull with one hand. Beware of close side clearances. Ride facing direction of the movement with body close to car. Know where there is close side or overhead clearances and keep from being knocked off cars. Don't overlook derails. When opening, keep the hands and feet in the clear to prevent them being mashed. Likewise, be sure to replace derails. Again, watch the fingers and toes. These men are forgetting safety sitting on footboard of engines because the engine may move. Sitting on rails or other track structures is also dangerous, for you never know what may happen to you or what may come. Sitting or lying under cars has caused many injuries and deaths. You never know when cars or engines may be moved. Train and enginemen are finding that goggles are of great benefit on or about engines and looking ahead from caboose or train. Prescription goggles are available for men who wear glasses, the company paying the greater portion of the expense. 
take orders from the cab. Operators should hold the fork still at proper distance and never try to loop it over the catcher's arm. Maintain a firm grip on caboose in picking up orders and again hold the fork still at a proper distance. Organize before starting the job. Compare time and get a definite understanding of what is to be done. Read train orders, check with each other and have a proper and definite understanding of their requirements. Compare time in accordance with the rules. Compare time before reaching points where time of superior trains must be cleared or where your train has to wait for a train. Call signals to one another. This not only applies to block or interlocking signals, but any signal affecting the movement of the slow signs. Train order signals and others including yard limit signs. Every man has his responsibility with respect to signals and yard limit rules. Sound proper signals approaching meeting and waiting points. Every man has his responsibility at meeting and waiting points. Let's stop accidents. Good judgment and faithful compliance with the rules will do the job. Don't take chances and be sorry. Thank you.